This is a full 18 hole vlog at Oak Creek Golf Club in Irvine, California. Oak Creek is a really nice golf course that is on the Four Links network and I'm playing with the CEO of FourLinks.com, Danny Wax. We'll get more into that later. Danny's also a really, really great golfer. So uh, it's, it'll be fun to try to pick his brain and learn from him some and play this round of golf. So stick with us. It should be a lot of fun. This first hole is like 370 yards or so, but there's a bunker to the left and right about where you would hit driver unless you were just going to, you'd have to carry it over 280 or something if you're going to hit driver. So it's 648 in the morning. Here's Danny. I hit mine down the right hand side, actually mine right down the middle and Danny hit his right down the middle as well. A little further than I did. We also got a chance to play with Stefan, who was on the Virginia Tech tennis team and basketball team at the same time while he was there. So, an amazing natural athlete that just picked up golf. Hey, everybody! Thanks for watching. I'm in Oak Creek with Stefan so. and uh, and uh, Danny from Four Links. A rare day out on the course. Danny has a newborn, so uh, excited yeah. to go it's out and nice actually to be play here, golf for sure. Danny's company is Four Links. What is Four Links? What do you tell people when like they know nothing about it? Pretty much we're a universal country club. I mean, right now we've got a growing network of golf courses, monthly subscription, and you can play golf at any course in our network anytime you want with the click of a button. Very easy. All right, so uh, we'll learn more about it. Those were uh, two drives in the fairway after uh, no warm up. We don't know what we're gonna, what kind of game we're gonna have today, but it should be a lot of fun. All right, 164. Yeah, hitting a lot less than driver left me a lot more in than I thought I would have so this is 164 yards with a 7 iron I'm working on my iron play a lot that was a well balanced strike felt great and it was right on line with it and it landed I'm, I think I got about 4 feet there so that was great yeah see before Danny when I was like because I was a golfing machine, you know the golfing machine? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Like I was super into the golfing machine before and desperate to get Shaftley and Impact and I was never able to get it, but I've been doing some things the last couple years that have kind of counterintuitive that helped it. All right, here's Danny from 151 yards. Danny plays a controlled fade that's real reliable and he hits it pin high just to kind of got a ground fade a little bit. So Danny, before you were, you're a uh, high level CEO, you were a, a mid-level pro golfer, <laughs> I guess. The main question I wanna, wanna ask you today that um, I think will be insightful for some people is really where you think pro, people who wanna be like playing pros, like where you think they go wrong. Like, cause I have a lot of friends who are playing mini tour stuff and other small events and trying to get on to bigger tours but yeah, no, it's a it's good not question. happening so it's uh i mean there's a variety of things to look at right like people practice what they're good at but mm -hmm. they should be practicing what they're not good at right. and you know if you look at your stats and you're driving it well you shouldn't be hitting driver you should be chipping and putting or practicing how to score inside 100 yards so i think self-evaluation is extremely important in those kind of moments is how how to score and how to evaluate your game and then from there, you know, it's really your mental approach. You know, I think that's the real differentiator from top level to mid-level to bottom level pros is, you know, talent is pretty comparable, but it's how do you control your emotions? You know, whether you make birdie or double bogey, uh, it should be all the same. Great advice from Danny. There's only so many hours in a day, even if you're a full-time golfer. So you got to really be smart about ah, well, how did it break this way? what you work on. That was Danny's birdie putt. Comes up just short. The fairways here, you'll see later, are amazing. They really feel great to hit iron shots off these fairways. And the, the greens were in very good shape as well. The conditioning here was great. You see, that's a different putter because I forgot my putter back on the putting green when we were warming up. So I just used Stefan's putter and then ran back and got mine which uh, maybe I should have grabbed my putter first and then came out. That's all right, shouldn't have forgotten it, really. So uh, second hole, 
is a dog leg left. You want to drive it over this bunker at that tallest tree there. Danny already hit while I was back getting my putter, and I hit a very solid drive there. Danny, uh, if we both hit solid drives, which Danny hits solid drives much more often than I do, Danny's about 20 yards longer than me. Very long, very long player. I hit a great wedge shot, really well balanced, and I'll have another putt from inside 10 feet. So that's great for the a good start for the first two holes. Here's Danny. Controlled wedge shot. That's looking good. Great shot, Danny. Oh, you know, the grooves just didn't affect the ball very much. It's kind of sitting down. And yeah. I, I got this crazy wedge from Taylor May. This thing is that's cool. grooves all the way up the face. Oh, so it's kind of like a like uh, kind of like the Mickelson thing. Yeah, exactly. And you're just talking about TaylorMade, and one of the reasons we're talking about uh, today is you were telling me for Be Better Golfers about uh, Four Links for Business. Yeah, so Four what Links originally started as kind of a personal subscription for individuals to join golf clubs around the country or around Arizona, California, Nevada. And, uh, existing subscribers were asking us how could they expense it through our, through their business. And then the head of Taylor or HR at TaylorMade reached out and said, "How can we offer a four-link subscription to our employees as a company perk?" Yeah. So a kind of light bulb moment for us, and now we're offering four-link points to companies of all sizes to be able to entertain clients, motivate their employees, or offer, you know, competitive HR benefits to their employees through golf. The thing that I like about Four Links, as opposed to some other things, is is that because uh, I'm a Four Links member, and I can like 10 minutes before I go out like book my time and go. Cause a lot of times I don't know I'm playing golf until like I'm playing golf, you know? Yeah, I, and how busy you know, I am. that's the cool part about four links is everyone's schedule is very different. And you know, that was our kind of big goal was to kind of make it as flexible as possible. So it could fit different people's routines, budgets, lifestyles, you name it. Cool. You guys can email Danny or go to fourlinks.com. If you want more information about that, let's get back to the golf. Danny's putt for birdie. Yeah, very subtle breaks out here. It's kind of difficult. On the first hole, the birdie effort that I made with the putter was extremely lame, so I'm trying to see if I can do a little bit better. I didn't hit it. I just didn't hit it. It was there. I just didn't hit it. So that was also very disappointing. But life goes on. It was a good ball striking to get me inside 10 feet on both, both the first two holes. It's 165 yard par three, beautiful here. The creek from Oak Creek runs into this pond there and it's really a pretty area of the golf course. Danny hit a good shot pin high over just to the right part portion of the green. And here's Stefan. Stefan's only been playing golf for eight months so a lot of people say like oh it's just there is no talent, there is no, it's all. It's only about doing more than 10,000 hours. Well, Stefan's made two holes in one in his eight month career of playing golf and he's already a single digit handicap. And uh, obviously, like I said before, he's, he's a great, been a great natural athlete in his life playing D1 tennis and D1 basketball simultaneously. So. It does give you a head start being a, a great athlete for sure. All right, so uh, I have, I'm hitting a, this is an eight iron down the hill. Try to take a well-balanced pass of this. And I hit that really nicely. Fading just a bit, it started left and it's fading just a bit. And I'll have about eight feet, I think. Another really good shot. That's usually the weakness of my game. Yeah maybe, yeah, maybe it's the uh, impact snap. The one thing that's been helping me with that, because this sp spot right here, sometimes when I would hit it, would come off, you know? And I wasn't, like, keeping that, like, let's say there's, like, at a dress, there's, like, six pounds of pressure, then an impact, maybe there's, like, 16 or something. Before, I'd be, like, I'd be on it, and then by impact, I wouldn't be pu pushing this at all, so I would really, it would a lot of times, You're like, uh, it was quit through loft. impact, and it would add loft and go left. Yeah, I've always thought that the best ball strikers I've ever come across like really smush it. Like, like I'll probably are hitting a seven iron like it's a six iron, you know? Right, right. They really get that 
the shot. The ball's gone, yeah. and then like the divot's oh, way in front of where that's the two the, That's kind of the telling thing, is I think yeah. looking at someone's divot is how far in front of the ball, like are you clipping the ball and then the grass? Yeah. It's a good drill to kind of do it off a tee. Yeah. You gotta see where the entire, like the bottom of your arc is. Yeah, like, Danny, do you think with, with divots, like say on a par three where you're teeing up pretty low, what do you think a divot should look like? Should you see some grass after where the tee was and then the divot start or like ideally? or I think you hit ball first, then divot. So right. you would see the divot probably a few inches in front of your ball. Here's Danny for birdie. You can see he was pin high. He's got an uphill putt and the green's in good shape. So just got to read it right. Came very close to making that. Straight away, Stefan. I think you're gonna maybe have a turn left. All right, putting for birdie. Yeah, if I had putted halfway decent, see that was actually a great putt, but I just read it a little bit. I should have just hit it straight. Okay, we're going to the fourth hole. This is a long hole, par four. Danny hit that really well, and it went very long. That was a that was a tight draw that then got a lot of roll after it hit. So this is my driver. I got a. Uh, this is my my old driver. I'm. I think I'm changing drivers soon. In part two, you guys will see on the back nine. You guys will see my my new driver. So I hit a good drive down the center. You can see Danny's ball on the left, and that was just that was just a sloppy transition. Transition is the big difference for with whether or not I hit a good shot. 141 yards for Danny. Sounded so solid, Danny. Yeah, he hits it good, and it's fading towards it, and he'll have a good result there. Yeah. Looks like after the hole, it kicks away. What did you have? I had 41. I tried to hit, like, just a little baby 9-iron. Uh -huh. I just thought it was a... I thought pitching wedge wouldn't even fly that far and then spin back. But. My iron shot went weak right into this bunker. It has a lot of sand in it, but it was wet this morning, so it's actually in pretty good shape. Wow, this screen's a lot firmer than yeah, that. I mean, it just doesn't hold. Hit a sand shot that I was happy with and had this four par. I've been putting really well recently, but so far I've had my first three birdie putts were all from about this length, and that one uh, wasn't awe inspiring either. It wasn't that great of a putt. So that puts me one over par. Danny's still even. He hits a Beauty. three wood, just totally drills it down the middle. Reminds me of a question I should have asked Danny. Put in the comments, how often do you think the top pros are hitting their drivers just dead solid? Like maybe it's a little left or a little right, but how often do you think that they're flushing the driver dead solid if they hit, say, 12 drivers in a round? All right, so I hit a good drive down the center, and then I hit, I tried to hit an easy shot with the pitching wedge. It was only 120 yards, and pitching wedge is like a 135 yard club for me. So I was gonna just try to only play it to my ear, but I ended up hitting it right over the flag stick, but way long. And the thing that the Be Better Golf putting system that I did with Tim has helped me out so much with is putting by time. Where, uh, I've been getting the speed right so much better by concentrating on how long the putt's going to be rolling for rather than how far to hit it. It's uh, I put up a couple videos about it recently, but it's really helped me a lot. There's Danny for oh! his birdie. You know, you would have made it, but Stefan gave you the early call. I'm really sorry. <laughs> Otherwise, it was in. So Danny gets away with the par there when um, normally... Probably would have been a birdie because he hit an awesome iron shot in very close air. This is for my par. Yeah, that's my hole in one. I was really happy to make two that. Of each other. Pretty cool job. Yeah. Like, this is a par five where it's a little more narrow than it looks here because there is a creek and bushes and other things to the right, which is where. There is. 
Danny just hit it in the junk to the right. He hit it a block that was really solid just to the right where the, the mess is. And then I, w I hit a total anti-right shot that is way left. So I'm actually in the fairway of, of a par three. And did not hit that great of an iron shot and then had to hustle out of there to get out of the way of the guys that were behind, that were on that hole. This is a really pretty area of the course. Actually is a creek here. All right, fall in the creek and, and you get lots of views that, on Instagram. <laughs> Danny did not find his ball, so he's dropping one here. So this is his third shot. Hit it super solid. Okay, after hitting my driver over on the fairway of a par three somewhere else, and then a five iron to here, I have a nine iron into the hole and landed it right on the stick, but then took a big bounce and uh, slid over to the right a little bit, but I'm in a good spot. All right, so Danny and I have been talking about when Danny was a pro and really the, the different mile markers that separate the levels of uh, golfers and what do you what do you think is one of the major things? I mean I think one of the major things is really taking advantage of the par fives. You know guys that are making bogeys or sixes on par fives versus fours I mean that's where you kind of break away from the field. Right. Percentage wise like in mini tour events and stuff around California how often should you be birdieing or better a par five? Well I mean all it's all relevant right like how long is the Yeah but like if you look at the, you look, the course of your entire season or career like. I mean you look at the scoring average on the PGA Tour, and I think guys are averaging, you know, 4.2 on par five. So, you know, they're almost uh, getting birdie every time. Yeah, it's like 75% of the time they're getting birdie. Okay, this is Danny chipping, I believe, for par. Because it is a long par five, and comes up a little bit short, so he'll have that left for his bogey. And he's just gonna go up and hit this here. And makes it. So that's a good, because I knew he made it. That's a good up and down to at least save bogey. I mean, sixes are, are really harsh, but did that really with the tee shot. It's my bid for birdie that misses and par for me, which is good after that tee shot, which was not good. All right, tee shot here on the par three. I'm in the bunker. It's not a good shot. And I shot think a lot of that was kind of, like I said, demeanor. You know, it's like you hit a par five and two, you're thinking eagle, 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 instead of like, hey, let's just get down and two, get the easy four and get out of here. Yeah. It, it was just like. And then you hit your I first always, putt and you're just like, oh, I better make it. You, know, you just yeah, like right. kill it past yeah. the hole. And it was just stuff like that that, you know, I wanted it to be way more flashy than it needed to be. Oh, right, yeah. You know, it's like you always want to shoot five under or make yeah. an eagle. But instead, it's like plot around the course, take care of business, do the simple things well. And yeah. that's, that's what adds up at the end of the day. You know, it's uh, a lot of patience. It's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint. And like golf is filled with these cliche right. sayings. But they're saying it's hard they're though right? as a mini tour player it's hard not to get into that sprint mentality when when uh, a three round event would be a very long event you know most of them you're playing you know one day qualifiers or one day money matches yeah or I mean things look like, that. like I kind of stayed away from any of like the one or two day pro events oh, unless okay. it was a Monday qualifier mm -hmm. and a Monday qualifier is a much different experience I mean you are literally trying to make as many birdies as possible right. I missed Danny's tee shot. I didn't film it on this hole, but he hit an awesome shot into the center of the green. And that was just not a good technique wise. Bunker shot for me. Here's Danny for birdie. Really close, good read, but didn't make it. So I'm gonna go up here and chip. See, I almost hit it in that, that scrub up there. But I actually have a good look at it from here. Landed it where I wanted, I just misread where it would bounce, that it wouldn't bounce straight towards the hole, that it would kick left. So I should have just played it up the hill just a little bit more, but impact was good. So that's mainly what I'm looking for with my chipping and pitching. So this is for bogey. Really like that stroke. I was stoked to make that. So that brings me to two over par. 
which it really shows that I should have made some of those birdie putts early on when I was hot. I did not take advantage of it. Hit an okay drive, fairly solid up the right-hand side. There is a bit of a U to the fairway here if you hit it up the right, so it kicked back, and I'm in a good spot. Danny oh, killed was it. Solid. Was that your best one of the day, Danny? Uh, that sounded, that sounded good. good. Yeah, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button so that you're notified when part two comes out because I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler alert. Danny Wax goes extremely low on the back nine at this course, and we get it all on film. It's really cool to see. I hit that really solidly. I just did not quite align myself to the slope of the hill. I thought it would bring it back to the left. Player Danny, walk us through your mental process here. Like, let us like have a little microphone inside your brain if this was a tournament. Yeah, I mean, first I'd evaluate the lie. And then from there, you kind of think of what trajectory you want to hit the ball at. So being that it's a front pin, you're coming uphill, I'm thinking of landing this right on the front edge with actually just kind of a mid trajectory, bouncing it up there. Do you have a number in your mind? Or are you just uh, like eyeballing I mean, pretty it? Pretty much I get inside 50 yards and it becomes all feel. And it's a mix of trajectory, spin control. So to me, I'm trying to land this you know, on the front edge, one bounce, check up and roll out a little bit. Uh -huh. One bounce, check up and roll out. Wow. Now, how do you make the golf ball do what you want it to do? That's a trick. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, we'll see. I can't, the camera can probably see, but I, we can't see. Now, Danny, when you were playing uh, professionally, did any of the guys that you regularly uh, like saw out on the mini, mini tours, did any of them make it big or, yeah, so, or like, I mean, became names? We I would used know? to play a ton of practice rounds with Kevin Kisner, Scott Brown, oh, okay. Ted Potter, you know, See, on a mix of, yeah. uh, at the time, the Nationwide Tour. and then I, That's interesting because Kevin and Scott both do short game with Tim. Yeah, Tim Yelverton I'm talking about has worked with Scott Brown for a long time and we've worked with Kevin Kisner for a long time uh, a while ago. I don't know that they're working together right now, but. So that was my putt and my speed has been great. My lines have not, my green reading, I guess, has not been fantastic out here. Because I'm getting the speed and I'm getting basically the start line I want. Danny for his birdie. Really close, another really close try there. So here's the ninth hole. Yep. Now you're hitting it good, gosh. And it seemed like something clicked on the last drive, on the last hole for Danny, because there's just another gear of ball speed to these drives now. Got that a little bit in the heel. I'll be in an okay spot, just not super solid, but right down the middle. So here is my approach on the ninth hole. That was a really well-balanced swing. I really like the transition too, because uh, that's mainly what I've been working on. And uh, just hitting shots off these fairways, it's just, it's like carpet. It's just oh, so good fun. shot, Danny. Danny hits a great shot. Watch Who this. Did? Had a chance to even fly in. I'll try to make that and get back to even on his round. This is me to get back to one over on the round. So, distance control has been a strength today, so I got it. Yeah, distance control was, was good there to put me within a tap in. It's just, can't expect more than a two putt from here. Anything outside of 33 feet, and that one wiggled it. Anything outside of 33 feet, if you're two putting, you're actually gaining a, a fraction of a stroke on the best players in the world. So. Making two putts from far away is going to be really great for your game. Danny lips out, and Danny will shoot one over par on the front nine. I'll shoot two over par on the front nine. And the back nine is really exciting because Danny, like I said, Danny goes really low. And there's some fun things to see coming up soon on Be Better Golf. So be sure to hit the subscribe button. Go over to fourlinks.com and check out Four Links for Business. Appreciate Danny getting us out here on this course that is part of the Four Links Network. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you soon, bye.